dual tyres match your riding style. Today we're going to talk about grip and why you can lean more. But let's first address the elephant in the room. Doesn't leaning increase the risk? Well we need to understand how tyres attain grip and how that defines which tyres are safest for your riding style so that you can safely lean more. Have you ever entered a corner trailing your brake and then suddenly realising you're starting to go wide? Trailing your brake into a corner is a great tool, but there comes a time when you have to just let go and lean. But to do that, you need the right tyres for you, which will govern how much you can lean with confidence. So to answer the question, does leaning increase risk, we really need to ask another question first. Why do we lose traction? Poor tyre condition, worn out tread, and even if you haven't used all the tread on your tyre, you can get dry rot. Now dry rot comes from exposing your rubber tyres to the sunlight for a long period of time. Also, incorrect tyre type for your riding style, whether that be commuting or sporty riding or off-road, you need to really think about what tyre works for you. The tyre choice needs to be selected based on the type of riding that it was designed to endure. Another thing is load. You could actually exceed the tyre's load capacity by having too much weight on the back of the bike. Then there's the road top of course, you've got asphalt, you've got concrete, you've got tar seal, you've got gravel, you've got corrugated roads, you've got dips and roads and bumps, all of this affects your tyres. Then there's acceleration and deceleration. Of course this also affects your tyres and your traction. And there's a whole other side of the equation which is rider technique. As an example, the front wheel of your bike wants to stay upright when it's travelling at speed. But if you're holding onto the bars too tightly, you can actually negate its natural ability to correct itself. The gyroscopic effect of the front wheel wants to actually hold the bike upright, which is actually a good thing. And if you put too much effort into those handlebars other than the initial counter steering effort, you can actually cause it to lose grip and cause a slide. Or as another example, while holding those handlebars too tightly, if you hit something like a cat's eye on a road when you're overtaking, you could actually initiate a tank slapper. Oh, oh, look at this! This is Paul Larry! Paul Larry! Big tank slapper at the bottom of Bray Hill and into the bank at the side of Bray Hill. By holding onto it tighter, you could actually make that problem worse. You're better to actually really loosen your grip and let that wheel slowly correct itself. There are many factors and this is what makes riding a lifetime joy of learning. Even two-time world champion Casey Stoner had wished he'd had the opportunity to actually ride in the same team as Valentino Rossi, suddenly to learn more. And this is the elite class of riders. But rider technique is a whole other subject and today we're just going to focus on tyres. Today we'll focus completely on the mechanics of tyres and how the rubber grips the road. For example, as it starts to rain, the water lifts the oils and the dirt and the rubber particles up out of the road, which actually lessens the mechanical grip. But after a few minutes, and depending on how hard the rain is, the mechanical grip starts to increase because those particles and the oils are washed off the road due to the camber of the road, leaving only water to contend with. This is why the road's more slippery when it's just started to rain, as opposed to when it's been raining for quite a while. You can often see that slickness in the road shining, all those colours of the oils and rubbers coming out of the road as you ride along it. But what about when you lose grip on a perfectly dry road or racetrack? What's going on there? Well now we need to dive a little bit more into friction. And how friction actually works. Friction force is actually proportional to weight. The higher the load on the tyre, the higher the friction. But there are limits, unless of course you're Marc Marquez who somehow defies the laws of physics. And then we have what they call in physics as the friction coefficient of different materials. Some materials have more friction than others, like rubber compared to ceramic or glass. Pushing a glass or a ceramic cup across a table is not that difficult, but pushing a cup with a rubber bottom is a lot more difficult, as it has a very high friction coefficient. So what is friction coefficient? It's the measurement ratio of frictional force resisting against two different surfaces. So moving our example of the wooden table and the cup to motorcycles, it's relatively easy to drag this tyre across the road because the only load on it is gravity. Let's now simulate a vertical force being applied to the tyre. We have now applied a greater load or force to the tyre and this is making it a lot more difficult to pull across the road. This is why sometimes us as the average rider or even racers lose the front end coming out of a corner because they apply the power too early while they're leaned over. Unloading the front wheel, reducing the force applied upon it, which is the multiplier of the friction coefficient. Hence, we've reduced 
grip. Reducing the load by 50% effectively reduces the grip by roughly the same amount. So it's not because we leaned over that we lost grip, we lost traction, it's because we adjusted the equation by adjusting the load. For many object surfaces, friction is independent of the surface area, meaning more rubber or a bigger tire doesn't necessarily mean more friction and more grip. A thinner tire will have the same friction as a bigger tire. What? So why do so many bikes in MotoGP have great big fat tires? One reason is to handle the power, the torque, and especially the heat. A larger tire with more rubber dissipates the heat that's transmitted to the tire through the drive, and this allows you to have a softer compound, which in turn allows you to have more grip. A soft, narrow tire would be destroyed extremely quickly under such powerful acceleration. Okay, I admit it, <laughs> I lied. <laughs> well, okay, not lied, but I didn't tell the entire truth. When I said more rubber and a bigger tire doesn't create more friction, I should have said that the bigger tire doesn't imply more grip. And there is a slight difference because there's much more to it than just how much rubber's on the road. There's also tire temperature to consider. Taking a rider who can generate sufficient operating temperature in a thinner tire and giving them a wider tire where they can't generate that temperature will cause them to have a number of problems because that tire will not give them as much grip as the one they were using previously. So it's not all about the width of the tire only. There is more to the equation than that to consider. And it comes down to your riding style. And not only your riding style, but your ability within that riding style. In some cases, when a tire doesn't reach optimal temperature the outer rubber can start to tear away from the inner carcass this is known as shearing this is why racers use tire warmers to ensure that the rubber on the outside of the tire and the carcass and also the rim are at operating temperature to avoid shearing but all things being equal when a narrow tire and a thick tire are running at their operating temperature then a wider tire is able to give more friction and more grip and the reason for this is a wider tire has more opportunity to key into the road than a narrower tire there's this more contact points. We ride on the road which is not smooth, it's rough and it's got something really good to bite into. Rubber tyres on the road create what is called mechanical keying. So though friction is independent of the surface area, it isn't independent of the surface type and braking into a corner loads that front tyre more and this is called the force acting upon it and therefore it multiplies the friction coefficient increasing traction and traction through load is a big part of grip. Again there are limits, the tyre does have to rotate at the correct speed to ensure avoiding sliding or tyre shear and rubber is not the only thing affecting grip. Traction of your tyre is affected by CRAB, C-R-A-B. It stands for cornering, road surface, acceleration and braking. They all exert variable levels of vertical and horizontal forces onto the tyre, or provide temporary ability to attach or key into the road. But friction coefficiency cannot be endlessly multiplied by the forces loaded upon it through additional weight or hard braking or cornering hard. And this is due to tyre load sensitivity. As the load on the tyre increases, increasing the contact patch of the tyre on the road surfaces, the friction coefficient decreases. So why does friction coefficient decrease? To understand this better, let's have a close-up look at mechanical keying and how this affects rubber friction, traction, or what we commonly call grip. Rubber is forced into the road through your bike's weight, braking, gravity, and your weight. The more load and the softer the tyre, the more rubber is keyed into these undulations in the road. Race looks, for example, like this one here, take that to an extreme because this uses high energy loss rubber. High energy loss rubber keys into the undulations extremely well, creating a very good temporary bond at the contact patch. But as the load increases, you eventually get diminishing returns. And that is because there's less and less room for that rubber to be forced into the road surface. I guess you could say the tires reached maximum contact patch and maximum friction. And if you go over that, you've reached maximum slide. A softer, wider tyre, e.g. a 255, when run at correct operating temperatures, can create more grip. But if you don't want to pay for wider rims, which for sure you'll need, else you'll change the contour of the tyre, then for those shorter canyon carving days, a better option might be to stick with an 180-55 with just a stickier compound. Write in the comments down below what tyres you've currently got on your bike. And don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And until next time, I hope you enjoy yourself out there somewhere.